I just would like to introduce you to the Ocean Stewards program. Um, it is a program that I spoke on last year at the, at the symposium. And so this year I don't want to rehash exactly what the program is about. Hopefully a number of you do know about it already. Um, but really just I'd like to update you on where we are with the program and give a little bit more detail and a little bit more context to it. Um, it's, a, it's a program that, is, that has been run through a few partners just listed in the, in the first slide here. But it's, it's, it actually requires a lot more support than that. We've got a number of organizations working within the program. Um, and I'll get to that at the end, but just the four main ones, the Blue Fund, um, ASEP, um, Grinrod Limited, the shipping company, and then, and then myself from, oh, from, from Wildlands. Um, all right, so just very briefly, marine environments, we know that they are extremely important um, from a, an environmental point of view, the ecological services, infrastructure that they provide um, is of huge importance too. Um, both human populations and high levels of biodiversity within the, within the oceans. Um, they provide buffering zones to our communities on, on living on the edges uh, along our coastline. And so it's important that we conserve these, these ecosystems. And they are under severe threat in our country, I think globally, but, but in our country specifically, we have got a rapidly developing country. Um, and the, the specific challenges that come with, with a rapidly developing and rapidly growing economy. Um, so we just need to make sure that the development that happens within South Africa happens with the oceans in mind um, and make sure that that development happens sustainably. Um, and to do this, we need, we need involvement in that decision making. We need to have a voice um, in the development goals of our country and we need strong people to do that. So we need strong leaders um, and we need knowledge within the, within the sector. Um, so to be able to argue with conviction and, and with knowledge behind us. So Operation Pakisa a few years ago um, initiated by the South African government and that was really to develop the economy, to de develop the blue or the ocean economy in South Africa. And, and, and a part of it is there's, there's a number of things, there's an industry within it, there's all the normal job creation that government, the targets that they have there. But also part of it is a marine protected area expansion target and, and the goals that are associated with that. Um, and within South African marine sector, we do have a, a really strong, and there's a number of people here at the symposium, um, research and marine biology, bio, biology sector. Um, and we need to strengthen that. We need to make sure that that is maintained um, so that we can, as I mentioned, have that voice, but to effectively secure um, the important biodiversity within, within our marine environments. Um, so I mentioned earlier that we've, this program wouldn't be possible without ASEP, um, the African Coelacanth Ecosystem Program, um, and that's funded through the NRF. And the, the, this is really the research arm of the program. So this is research that is critical to the country and, and it is taking place. And so the Spatial Solutions Program was one that was started this year. So it's a three-year program running from 2016 to 2018. And it's really trying to build on the existing systematic plan that we have in the country. So looking at sea plan and others, um, verify the surrogate data, and just trying to sample get biological um, ge geological and oceanographic data and verify all of that. Um, and the area that this is focusing on has been between Richards Bay and, and Port Edward. Um, and, and so that's the section of coastline within KZN that we, that we have been focusing on. And then on the other side of the, the coin is the capacity within the marine conservation sector. Um, there, is a, there is a shortage of marine scientists and, and conservationists. Many of our marine protected areas are often managed by um, people with experience in the terrestrial side of things. And so we need to be making sure that we, that we fill all these posts with, with strong individuals who've got the experience. And, and a lot of our marine scientists coming out of universities, coming into the sector, have a very limited practical exposure. So a lot of them have 
um, just through op lack of opportunity, have worked more in, mainly in mangroves or in coastal sections. Very few have actually had the opportunity to be out at sea and to spend time doing practical, proper research. Um, and then also a lot of students getting to second, third year level, they're not necessarily seeing the path, the career path in, for them in the marine sector. So a lot of them are naturally going towards areas or towards sectors where they can see better opportunity. So we need to be showcasing this and showcasing the opportunities um, and ideas for them. So the combination of these two elements is really what the program is about. Um, we have the spatial solutions, the ASAP element, which is the research arm, and then Wildlands Ocean Stewards section, and bringing those together. So we are achieving, hopefully achieving, both of that. You're getting that practical, relevant experience for our students, um, for our um, future leaders, future generations, but at the same time, we're actually contributing significantly to the research of the country and, and providing the data that we can use to, to manage our marine resources. Um, quite a complicated diagram at the bottom there, but really it's just how do we take these students through this, this whole program? Um, we've got key marine science programs, and the value identifying and highlighting the value of seas, value of healthy, healthy oceans, and we're using top scientists within the country are also who are doing that work, and, and they need the platform to be able to carry out that work. Then, um, taking that into an offshore marine research going out, out to sea and the, the vessel that we have been using is the Angra Pequena, that, that vessel, the research vessel run the first slide and that has all the equipment so the research is actually taking place on that vessel so it's not a matter of going out and coming back in, the students and the researchers are spending time together out at, out at sea. Um, then from a, an academic perspective getting the ocean stewards to take part in symposiums, take part in this symposium, for example. We've had um, some of our ocean stewards have presented at a number of other um, scientific platforms. And it's just getting that linking up with other work that is being done out in the sector and, and getting that experience to present, getting that experience to present their own work and, and other work that they've, that they've had. And then a key element here, you saw in the beginning, um, we, we have linked up and had support from Grinrod Limited, um, the big shipping and logistics company. So it's industry that's working directly in the marine sector. And we want the ocean stewards to understand the needs from an industry point of view. So what are those development needs that South Africa has? So we're not just going with our blinkers as, as scientists or conservationists, we're actually understanding the bigger, the big picture of the country. So, so really the aim is to develop skilled marine scientists and conservationists by exposing students to practical and relevant marine research off the South African coastline. Um, a very complex map here and I just really wanted to highlight the areas, the, the areas where the research is taking place. And you see I brought in the 2015 element as well and this was also through ASEP, the surrogacy project and that was um, carried out when we first started the Ocean Stewards program in 2015 um, and that a lot of those sampling points sort of south of Durban there is where that was taking place. Um, the spatial solutions element, three year project, this year we've done a lot of the sampling has been done from Durban north, Durban up to Richards Bay, focusing quite heavily um, on the Tugela Banks area where there's a proposed marine protected area. So these are all the points there really just to give you an understanding of where um, the sampling points of where the ocean stewards are getting that exposure and where the science work is being done. Um, summarize the, 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 um, the efforts for this three year for the spatial solutions program. Um, we had, it was supposed to be split up between multi-beam surveys and biodiversity surveys this year. Um, but we ended up doing a lot more biodiversity surveys this first year. And then that's the plan for the, for the next two years. So it is a long-term thing. We still have, we'd like to see a number of extra students and more every year students coming through and linking into this same program. So they're all contributing and getting exposure to, this, to similar but relevant work. Um, the network of ocean stewards, it's growing quite rapidly. We're only in our second year and we already now have um, 40 students that have, that have gone through and that are still participating in the, in the program. 
formerly 16 students a year, that's what, we, that's what we are supporting. So last year we had 16 and that's 12 um, third year and then four honours level students going through the, going through the program. And, but then we're having a number of other students that are, and interns that are working within the sector and also using the opportunity to come on and gain that experience, gain that practical exposure. And, and what's nice is we haven't just seen the 2015 students sort of drop off the, the radar now. They're still coming, they're participating in a lot of activities that we're doing. They're still coming to a number of um, ocean sessions. So it is a growing network. Um, just some of the, the research that they are being exposed to. Um, we had 45 remotely operated vehicles, uh, stations uh, dedicated, and then 19 full stations, which included the oceanographic work, plankton toes, and the bribes of beta remotely and underwater videos. Um, and so this is just, just some photos along the bottom there, just exposing the students who have studied all of this, but now there's an opportunity to actually get on board and do these sampling techniques themselves. Um, and, and working with top scientists in all of those sectors who are carrying out research in that, in that element as it is. Um, yeah, so very, very important work and, and great exposure and, and working with their sort of mentors. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, just the ocean, the ocean stewards having the ability to present at sessions like this. Um, we've got four, four students presenting at the symposium this year. Um, and last year we had a number, there's a photograph of one of our, one of our ocean stewards from 2015 presenting here. And, and Tuli, she's, she's one of our um, students who's gone on to receive bursary support and she's presented at a number of other functions as well. So it's getting that, giving them the confidence to present at these sort of functions. And yeah, and then bursary support. So through the NRF and through Wildlands, um, we have managed to secure bursary support annually for, for four of those ocean stewards. So ones that are really now wanting to carry on with the work that they've been exposed to. Um, and then we've had a great, just great exposure um, of the of the ocean stewards program. And, and thanks a lot to roving reporters that they've, they've really taken this on board and seen the value in it. And, and they've sent students out as well to, to join us on a number of these um, sessions or excursions. And so, so just from a, from a donor's point of view, for, for Grinrod, for example, the money they put in, we can, we can show that it provides significant exposure for them. From our point of view, we're just generating, through this program, we're able to generate a lot more interest around marine um, marine issues and, and some of the other challenges that we have within the marine sector. Um, but as I, as I mentioned there, the, the network is growing and the, the whole Ocean Stewards program has become more than what we wanted it to start with. It's actually, it's really blossomed, it's really boomed. Um, it's actually a group of colleagues there. <laughs> um, but now we do, we have this group of, we have this great network that when we have other work going on, we can phone up, we've got a pool of talented and experienced students now. A lot of them now moving into the, into the professional fields. And, and it's, it's really a, a close network now, and that's just with the scientists as well. Um, and just some of the points that have come out from, from the Ocean Stewards is that there's no substitute for the real experience, so for them to be able to get out there and actually get their hands involved with, with some of this amazing research that's being done. And then spending time, five days out at sea, um, spending time with their sort of scientist um, supervisors or, or um, their sort of mentors. And that's helping a lot of them to understand the career opportunities that are available for them. Um, yeah, and then just, just to summarize, just a few um, photographs from their experiences out on the, out on the boat. Um, four or five days out at sea, exposure to a huge amount of work. So it, it really has been a, been a great experience. Um, and yeah, it, it, we are feeling that it's, it's, it's being successful and we would like to see it continue to grow to become a program that's something that the students around the country will be eager to be part of. So we want students sort of almost fighting to, 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 to take up that space in, in the program. Um, and all we need to do is to now find resources to keep it going. 
but yeah, very, very valuable experience, and, and hopefully we are inspiring a lot of, a lot of students. Um, and then for all those partners, um, specifically all the scientists that spend a lot of time um, with the students, and we have a science session day, we have three days science session where all the students, um, some of the students present, but all the scientists present on their work, and it's just time to, to really engage with each other. Um, and then to all our, all our partners within the program. Um, it wouldn't be possible without all of those. So thank you very much. And